humanity uh, Putting truth in these lies Why they busy feeding lies When you got that tunnel vision Gotta open up your eyes Wake up and go to sleep Man, I'm praying all times And to my guys, ain't no other side This for my brothers, I'ma pray with y'all shine Lock the door Go ahead, lock the door Lock the door Go ahead, lock the door Yeah, you already know Depending on the lessons, some people eat, some people learn, but the game is going to send you a bill. If you want to break it down and try to explain it to me based on the numbers and the system itself, don't even waste your time. I'm lost with words myself, and I'm lost with the understanding that it's crazy how this internet pick and choose. It's crazy how the so-called streets now pick and choose, mm -hmm. right? Well, once about a time, it was really rules set in place. Well, rules is rules. And if you violate them fucking rules and you call yourself being from these streets, then you already knew the consequences. Point blank. Because nobody ever had been bigger than the program in the streets. Because it was rules. And when it was that way, it eliminated all this shit right here. All this hearsay, who say, or who really did what, or who snitched, or who's really this, and who, it eliminated all that. If a nigga name popped up in people paperwork, nigga, you in violation, and you violated. You can't even explain your way out of that shit. Ain't no, oh, well, the people took me over here and gave me an extra different time cut because I did this on this plea. See, it was different, different rules and different operations for us coming up in them late 60s them 70s and them 80s. It was a different rule, different operation. Snitching was prohibited, bro. One for couldn't tell on cats and get away with it because it was soldiers, real soldiers formulated in these streets. Just to give you a real quick example. Remember that time, it was a time in the era. You in the streets and you doing your thing and you accumulated and made a name for yourself and you really one of them niggas. So I tell cats all the time in TV land and break it down so I you know, I could take I, I could take that title as a gang guru if I chose to because I come from that lifestyle and I really live that life and I understand the methods of it. I understand the period. My point being is this: cats don't understand the real breakdowns, Melly, when it come down to the Los Angeles gang culture. Period. They don't even understand what a gang member mean, a gang banger, and a nigga from the set. Those are three different categories. Those are three different categories. Three I, different categories. I wholeheartedly agree with that. And the nigga from the set, he surpassed. But then there's one more. There's one dude that he just live in the neighborhood. He just to live in. No, that's the member. Okay. That's the member. Okay. No, no. I, matter of fact, I give you that. That's the association. I right. take that back. That's the association. So we got the association, the member, the gang banger, and the set, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you start out from a choice. Every last one of us, except some of us, because they born into it literally from your parents. They instill it in. So you come from four and five with the word, the signs, all that from off top. But then some of us, we're, we're given it in choice where you choose to get into it and get involved. So your upbringing, you ain't even there yet. You might be 12, 13. You ain't threw up a gang sign, but you from the hood. So you from the association because you're living in that neighborhood. You live on that side. But now. You get 14, 15, you start sliding signs in at the parties while you're dancing. You becoming a member now. So how you surpass all four categories and become that top category is that nigga from the set. Because the nigga from the sets is the individuals in the meetings is politicking. Not you gang members, nigga. You gang members can't politic in a meeting. See, that was the difference in our era. You ain't got, you ain't been in the meeting, nigga. You can't even be in this meeting because you ain't putting that work in. Only the niggas is putting the work in this from the set or to attend to these meetings when it come down to disciplinary. Speaking on a nigga who formulated a jacket on himself, being a snitch, ran out on some homies, all the above. Ain't no gang members in these meetings. It's gang bangers and the niggas from the sets. Because the gang bangers are the next up. 
they on their way, working their way up to be coming from the set. See, it's all categories that you got to maneuver. And it's a growth. Your way in, bro. It's a growth. It's straight up growth. You know what I'm saying? So niggas don't jump in. And you Like these niggas jump in the game nowadays. They're they a five-star general. It's funny, man. That's very funny to me. I look back and I say, damn. Me and Big Brazy for four, five, six. Shout out to my homie, man. Double OG Brazy. We was just on the phone three days ago. He was like, OG. And Brazy was one of my straight up warriors, nigga. A soldier. I done groomed my nigga. So I, I, we on the phone, we like, he going, hey, homie, is this what this shit to come to? We put in all this work and we put this design down for this B thing, man, to be the way it is for our homies, the generations to come, to be able to have safe haven in these systems. And look how this shit is. I said, bro, I'm going to tell you just like, it's, it's crazy how you speak on this because this is the part of me where I live my existence of life of regrets that I gave 30 years of my life devoted and dedicated to what I did to these funky ass streets that ain't gonna give me shit or nobody else nothing back in return but death and pain, saga and hurt, bro. I regret I gave 30 years of this shit. My non-regrets is the fact that if I had to do it all over again and grow up in a certain neighborhood, I would never take that for Nixon Guard and take that for my hood. I would rather be right there where I was to learn all that I learned because it helped mold me from being the man and the warrior that I am. But for us, the, the choice of me choosing to put on that damn red suit and live the life for the devil for 30 years, bro, when I told him this when I lost my parents and my little brother, that's my life of regret, bro. This is why I pushed the line and why I pushed it so hard, Melly, to give back to the public and give back to the youngest out there and certain individuals who listen and follow me, bro. This ain't the path, niggas. You I'm a be whatever you want to be in your life. I want to say this. I'm a component of this. You can't ruin or destroy a real dude, street dude reputation with the internet. You got to do it in the streets, in the penitentiaries, in the alleys, in the parks where it's built at. Because the internet allowed people to say anything. anything. Without being checked. See, BJ, what's happening? When you and I grew up, I'm a little older, we follow, we follow pecking orders, we follow leadership, and we followed instructions. Today's dudes follow trends. That's why you get them saying the ops and all this. They don't even know what saying dead homies mean. We couldn't do that, BJ. Wait, wait, he get his ass beat. Talking about Simone the dead. What? That's Right out disrespectful. And this 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 thing. When you say dead homies, that's a plural. That's more than one. You ain't talking about one. You just say that's on dead homie Rodney. That dead homies. You had to specify. You're Everybody. Right. No, I'm just saying. Yes. They don't do that. They don't even no. specify. No. Hey, remember what it used to be a time come back back in the late 90s, come up in the 90s, when the younger generations had started that shit, they'd be like on that person who probably deceased that year or a couple of years down the line, they put it on that person's name, specific. They specify. There ain't no more specification. It's everybody. Your brother, my brother, your auntie, your uncle, June bug, everybody. It don't matter. The dead homies. If you from that hood and you dead, the dead homies. Man, how rightfully disrespectful is that, bro? You know what, BJ? I'm not concerned with me. Me personally, I see people saying whatever they're saying. I don't care. Personally. And you know something? As a black man and a king of growth and change, I must oblige to say I feel the same goddamn way. You know, that's our problem. We glorify and we put out all the red flags and balloons for the wrong shit. So you mean to tell me now, it's a problem with a man who goes and make the sacrifices and change his ways from the streets as a gunner, squabbler, hustler, nigga who done took, bust niggas in the head and ride, right? We don't, you, you don't get glorification for that individual getting out of prison for 25, 30 years and he changed his life. Nah, that ain't good enough. You gotta be over the top, nigga. You gotta be a nigga that's going down in history that's written in the books. At selling narcotics to your own people. Yeah, nigga, you killed your own kind, but that ain't big enough now. The dope is the biggest shit. 
We don't even care about the killers no more. Why do we feel the need to celebrate that? That's my point. That's what I'm saying. This shit is cr we fucked up, bro. When I say we. Mental confusion. When I say we, I'm talking about the black culture, us, mm -hmm. our people, our folks. We fucked up. Because they, they just throw us anything. That's what I'm saying is, okay, why not it be this way then? Unless you got BMF tattooed on your body like a lot of these old foes do. That should who be that should have been the motherfuckers, the only motherfuckers out here celebrating, if anything, and congregating because the Godfather came home a part of that structure and organization. But that organization fell when the Godfather fell. It wasn't even it wasn't even what it was no more. Period. Because niggas scattered. See, once you take away the real thorough leadership, it's a wrap. Because if it was that thorough, it would have withstand and stayed that way. But it was no way, it was no way how it was gonna stay that way. Once the federal rally boys got their hands involved into the shit, because now keep it cranked up if you want to. We got too many informants planning into your your, or, your organization now to the point where it'll never exist no more. So I don't know what people think. He finna come home and he finna have another big old sack. And, oh, we own niggas in this state. In this state over here, we finna be on like the niggas was in the nineties. Nah, once we, the feds get you, it's over. You gotta find saying, something man. else to do. I don't know what we be thinking, man. Niggas is crazy, bro. Feel me? BJ, let me ask you this. This, this is kind of like a strange phenomenon to me. Why do everybody in all these other states, they claim our culture, they invested in our culture, they came either Keyway or Damu, right? But they also bond in our trauma. Never been to LA, never been to Watts, never been to Compton, but they find a way to bond in our trauma. Our trauma is our trauma. I understand that. But you, if you... 3,000 miles away, you can't bond in this trauma because, like your earlier statement, they don't know nothing. They think they know this, but they really don't know it, DJ. Well, when when certain individuals from the coast, meaning the West, coming from our <coughs> coast, coming from the turf, and certain individuals get on this internet and these platforms, this quote-unquote OGs and gangsters or whatnot, killers, they open them doors and them avenues. That's that's why it, it, it comes from there. See, it's it just just get a prime example, bro. I sit back and I'm watching and watching, and it's like it's so easy for niggas to be manipulated on this internet. To where they don't, when you look up, you'd be thinking, "Oh, I thought these cats was thorough. These niggas don't even stand on morals or principles either, and they supposed to be gangsters, right?" Like, you know, you got you got particular individuals on here who really, really rule ruling the media world as far as the West Coast. It has nothing to do with our culture. But our culture follow it heavy. And, and, and they, they idolize it. You know what I'm saying? To the degree where at some point, who, where does the disciplinary of checking come in at of respect? Oh, I get it. You too serious, OG. That's what they tell me. You too serious, man. The internet, it, it, it's it's entertainment. So it's how this this is where I had to learn from this shit. Oh, you know what? You're right. You make a damn good point. This shit is entertainment. Surviving street politics demand a keen observation and adaptability, and it also requires an emotional intelligence. How do you rate us in that? I'm talking about when you look at the West Coast. Now, not I'm, I'm talking about the '70s. I understand the not '70s and '80s. I'm talking about now, not yeah, the present. I'm talking, I'm talking about, about now. now. Here now, weak. We done fell off. We done fell off so hard, man. We weak. I should say, if we were following the standards of where it was, we wouldn't get the disrespect and the, the backlash that we get, internet or not. We wouldn't get it because niggas will still respect because they know. All right, you talk that shit on the internet, but boy, when you go to LA, LA is a different ball game. It's a different planet. And it is. Even still, when niggas talk that shit on this internet and be acting like, oh, like you, you know, you hear, you hear the cats on here, oh man, the LA niggas in California think they the toughest and the bad. No, I ain't we think we the toughest and the baddest. It's just like any other area, any other, any state, any other globe. This particular city, when it comes to the street culture and it comes to the gang culture and the dominance of that. It breed all type of different type of men and warriors and soldiers because you have to be in order to survive and withstand that. Other cities, they have to grow up like that. No matter what you say out there now, in the past, that wasn't your life. 
Probably now it's like that now because the trends, because that's all all you niggas is doing, following gang trends. That's it. Cities are being turned out from a trend, not because this was their culture. I remember because I traveled all my life. I've been traveling. So I remember times when I was even gangbanging on my gangbanging tip and going to other states and cities. The purpose of being there was the comfortability that they don't got gangs down here. Nigga ain't got to worry about getting shot up down here. They don't know nothing about no red and blue shit. Nigga have on whatever you want to have on. That was the the, the, the the advantages that they had. You feel me? So for them to sit here and mimic what was created here, what was started here, and besides the Chicago aspect of gangsters, that's why I always break that down and, and explain in the video. Chicago didn't start no gang banging. They didn't start gangsters. Chicago produced gangsters, hustlers and gangsters. We, Los Santos, we created that bullshit, the gang banging syndrome. Blood on crip, cripping bloods and, and black on black killing and shooting guns for colors. That shit was established right here in Los Angeles, bro. Feel me? And spread it like a, like a virus throughout the world now, man. And, and that's not something to say to be proud of. It's like, it's crazy how people cannot see the thorough history of that and understand the dynamics of, okay, shit, hold on, man. We didn't even come from this. Why, why are we even trying to mimic this? We, we not even from this life in that world or none of that. No, nothing of it. We grew up with stay alert and keep your head on the swivel. What is it today, DJ? Nigga head ain't on no swivel. Nigga head back here in the back seat. You driving, you... You driving in your seat back there in the back seat. You can't see nothing. I was I was just telling the cat on the interview. And it's, I'm still like this right now today. If you're not my kids, feel me? You can't even be my relative. You I don't allow a nigga to ride in the back seat behind me, man. No. It's ride shotgun. If you ain't my babies, my kids is grown. I'm the only people I can trust in my life ever. It's going to ride behind me. Ain't no nigga ride behind me, bro. That what was talked to me from these streets. That what was instilled in me from my OGs, my big homies. Feel me? You want to continue to keep yourself in your leadership and safe haven, even your own soldiers. You never allow yourself to be relaxed where you allow a nigga to get behind you and ride behind you. Because that one time the nigga behind you may be the nigga to take the contract. Lock the door. <laughs> I'm a street nigga, streets fuck with me. I'ma keep pushing products to the fans, get me. It's Guap off top, Diamond Cordier. That nigga wall won't give a pro bitch the time of day. They see me climbing, they see me shining. That's hard work, hard work, proof of grinding. Get out.